Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. We are your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus and Ushamut Zide Pinkavichin. We've been mastering secrets of organ playing for more than 20 years and sharing them on this blog since 2011. On this show, which we create from our home in Vilnius, Lithuania, we strive to help you grow in every area of organ playing, including practice, technique, repertoire, sight reading, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory, harmony, and many others. Our hope is to help you become a complete musician, or what we call as total organist, a program which we have created to help you reach your dreams faster than you would do on your own. If you are new here, we invite you to subscribe to receive free updates of this blog at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video on how to master any organ composition and 10-day organ playing mini chords. And now let's go to the podcast for today. Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Usha. Let's start episode 321 of Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This question was sent by Heidi. And she writes, Wow, Vidas Pinkiewicz, what an artist you are. Runs in the family except your media is painting with music rather than oils. The music you've created and performed here is deeply profound and moving to me. At times I also noticed that it is so far above my comprehension that I feel a bit confused. In no time, however, the music is telling its story. Again, the bird singing uh, brought so much joy. I actually wondered for a moment if they were live birds. And then there is the giant. How I loved hearing the giant come tumbling down, very deliberately, filled with tension and suspense, slow, getting slower as he descended. Wow, it was so much fun listening to this. Everything about this piece is wonderful, including the artist. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, the fact that the organ is mechanical totally added to the musical drama. Beautiful performance by the artist with us. Articulation beyond compare. You deserved a vacation after that. Phew, I loved it, Heidi. Uh, it seems that Heidi is talking about um, my performance in um, in Liepoja, Latvia, when I recently broke down that organ. Yes, nobody now will invite you to perform. <laughs> this was storytelling improvisation um, about David and Goliath, which I recently shared it with our listeners too. Uh, so, what can you say about this feedback? Because obviously you could tell more things than I. Well, you know, I wasn't in Liepoja together with you, so what can I say? Was it hard for you to register during performance? I made two recordings. One was uh, rehearsal and another was um, live performance in front of the audience. And... Um, This rehearsal, which lasted exactly one hour, was all the time I I had to adjust to the organ. So I deliberately limited my practice time on these instruments and wanted to find out how would it feel to give it really live and spontaneous performance on such a big organ with 131 stops. And uh, to my surprise, rehearsal was even more spontaneous, I think. Um, Maybe because the organ didn't break somehow. Uh, But. Well, just, you know, do not scare our listeners. You actually didn't break that organ. 
the electrical company who was fixing that organ a week maybe before your performance forgot to add one extra phase. Mm-hmm. And since the organ is purely mechanical, it needs a lot of, you know, power. And it didn't have enough power. So that's why at the end of the recital, simply all the power was off. Or maybe the organ gave up and said, Oh no, I cannot stand with those improvisations. Let's finish this uh, this uh, concert earlier. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> It's just a coincidence. You never know what's, what goes inside of this beast. Monster organ, really. Uh, even without additional uh, side panels, it's already very big. But... Uh, In 1885, I think, Gruneberg added, uh, enlarged this instrument, made it in, into a larger instrument than the Riga's Cathedral, actually, the famous Walker organ there. Um, and it's completely mechanical. It only has, I think, Barker machine for the first manual, yes. But no, no combination actions. Everything has to be done by hand. So to answer your question, actually, it's easier to register on that organ than on St. John's organ because the stub handles are shorter. You could move a few of them quickly. Well, yes, at St. John's, is some, sometimes you get a feeling when you are trying to pull off the organ stop that actually the organ stop might, you know, take you into the organ with it. Mm -hmm. And I had another uh, improvisation experience when Pope Francis was visited, visiting uh, Vilnius and Lithuania too. So I played uh, in uh, Lukishku Square, In, um, in conjunction of his prayer at the monument uh, for the victims of genocide. And um, there I had an um, elect electronic organ, digital organ, I mean, uh, Johannes organ. And that time I didn't use uh, the stop knobs, I used um, buttons. Dynamic buttons, pianissimo, piano, mezzo piano, mezzo forte, forte, fortissimo, those kinds of things. And I think it worked quite well. But yes, it was sort of easier for me to, to just push the button and to, to see the desired dynamic level. But I kind of didn't feel in control because... Uh, by pushing the button you give up control you don't know exactly what will sound but I think in the, in the you know, occasion like this when you don't have rehearsals basically and when you are improvising in an open space mm -hmm. let's face it you don't know how the result will be anyway Yes, you might have heard one thing uh, where loudspeakers are next to you and you don't know what the audience is hearing 300 meters further. And I was listening to it on TV mm -hmm. because it was broadcast. So so I think it sounded fairly well. Mm -hmm. So um, to go back to Heidi's comment... Um, Uh, she started her comment uh, that it runs in the family, except my media is painting with music rather than oil. My dad was a painter. and So do you think it's partially because of, of, of him you are so creative? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, think, uh, I think we are, we are all creatives. 
in one way or another, maybe in, in different fields, maybe. Not necessarily in organ playing, everybody equally creative. Mm-hmm. But but what I mean, uh, I took from my dad uh, maybe motivation to create because I saw the example. But not necessarily the genes, you know, he didn't transmit his... Uh, organ playing genes to me because he wasn't an organist. But don't you think that your parents could understand you better what you are doing? Because we we were, you know, artists themselves. I hope so, yes. People who create themselves tend to understand other creators better. But uh, I could also feel a certain limitations when talking to my parents about uh, organ playing their knowledge about organ artists was very limited you know and uh, my dad for example he could not really differentiate between certain periods of musical composition I believe so I don't really know what or how he comprehended organ music interesting Maybe a little bit differently than than a person from the street would, but but certainly not like an organist. Well, but still, you know, you were lucky that you could talk about art in general because what I could talk with my parents was, you know, with my mother about blood formula Uh and with my dad about all that building engineering things. Which is also creative too. But <laughs> still, it's very far from music and organ playing. Yes, in order to talk about engineer uh, creatively, you would need to know a lot about engineering before you even start this conversation. But actually, yes, my dad helped me a little bit to understand how the, you know, the things in the drawings, the engineering drawings mm-hmm. looks like. And it helped me in an organ building class that Jean Bidon taught us in Lincoln. Uh, listen, Osha, of course, your background with your family is different from mine. But tell me this, would you say that your creativity over the years diminished or is growing? I think it's growing. Why? Because I'm living with you. <laughs> no, because you let it grow, I think. That's that's all it takes. I think with each, simply you stop fearing things, to try things. Mm-hmm. So, it helps. I Actually, so too. To, to stop thinking what others will think about you. Stop comparing yourself to masters. True. Mm-hmm. Or your peers, you know, your colleagues. Just ignore everybody. Ignore your husband, Oshra. <laughs> I don't think you would like that. Actually, I would love it. And uh, then I could ignore you. Really? Yes. Okay, let's try. Let's start ignoring each other. <laughs> How we will do this podcast then? Um, I think our ig- ignoration or ignorance of each other, is that a word, uh, would last only until lunch. <laughs> yes. You always know where the food is coming from. Unfortunately. Thank you guys uh, for listening to our silliness. We hope uh, this um, makes you smile a little. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen. This blog is supported by Total Organist, the most comprehensive organ training program online, where you will find courses for every area of organ playing, including technique, practice, sight reading, repertoire playing, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory and harmony, with hundreds of scores and thousands of exercises. Here is what some of the students are saying. Hugh writes, The sight reading course has helped me tremendously. Thank you very much for your essays, courses and all your help. 
Robert writes, I found the fingerings, registration ideas and general comments to be excellent. John writes, I have found your download very helpful. It was really excellent. I have watched some of your teaching videos and when I read your instructions. I try to imagine you are there teaching me. You may feel disappointed that I am two three days behind, but I am a slow learner and I have committed to taking the time to get it right as you say. But the other night my wife commented that she had never heard me play such a detailed melody in the left hand so well. My left hand is generally poor. Robert writes, It has been a great pleasure in my life of having discovered your courses and material as well as the YouTube work of recordings. You have a calm and pleasant way of teaching. Ron writes, Hi Vida Santosha, thank you guys. What a wonderful response to my email note to you. You've got me right, and I feel you understand my level of playing. Yes, at home and lucky that I have an organ for that reason. I am paying attention to this, and I am going to try this haha no longer secret model. Yes, and I love Caesar Frank too. What is very nice about your blog podcast is that Osha and Vidas are like a Socratic dialogue, and by bouncing things off of each other, so much more information comes out and is expressed. Your comments contain a wealth of information and understanding. I really appreciate this. It is very inspiring and will keep us moving forward. Would you like to receive the same or even better results that our students are getting? If so, join them at organduo.lt slash total dash organist. And of course, you will get the first month free too. You can cancel anytime. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to receive free updates of this blog, make sure you do that at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video, how to master any organ composition and... 10 day organ playing mini course. This was Vidas and Osha from Secrets of Organ Playing. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen.